So I had never heard of this brand called Kraft. That is from Sweden, but I saw a lot more runners starting to run in this shoe. So it got me intrigued and I knew I had to test it out for you guys. So after a couple of runs, I'm ready to give you my first impressions of the Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon. Starting with the specs, this shoe has 40 millimeters in the heel, 30 in the forefoot with a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. It comes in at 280 grams for a men's size eight and a half. And I put this in the carbon plated racer category. So talking about fit, I thought the length was pretty good. However, I thought it was kind of a little wide for my more narrow foot and the midfoot lockdown was pretty good. However, but I think the heel fit was a bit sloppy. I think this is mainly due to the lack of structure and padding back there. But let's go ahead and learn more about the shoe in the What's New Shoe Overview. So the upper is a thin and minimal one-piece engineered mesh that it definitely feels more road-oriented and has essentially no padding on it. The midsole is 100% EVA, what they call their vault foam. It has a full-length forked carbon fiber plate and it does have a sock liner made with TPU pellets similar to what Boost is from Adidas. The outsole has aggressive ultra track rubber lugs with a good amount of coverage. So now let's talk about the ride of this shoe. So thanks to that kind of rocker geometry it does have a pretty smooth ride. With that carbon plate and that EVA foam it doesn't feel energetic but it also doesn't feel dead. It's just kind of a more muted ride, I would say. However, that TPU insert does help add a little bit of extra bounce and cushioning to it. The outsole is obviously super grippy and I found it to feel good on roads, but it felt really good when I took it on some gravel trails. So I think this is a really good road to trail shoe, but I think the ride does feel a little better on those softer surfaces. As for the weight of the shoe, it is pretty heavy, but you don't notice it too much unless you go from wearing this shoe to a shoe like the Vaporfly. All right, now let's go ahead and do a couple quick comparisons to the Kraft Ultra Carbon. The first shoe I'm gonna compare it to is the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 and specifically my custom Flyknit pair. So both these shoes have pretty minimal uppers, they have thick stack heights, carbon plates, and some more aggressive outsoles to them. However, the outsole materials are definitely quite noticeably different with the kind of firmer regular EVA here and the Piba based ZoomX foam on the Vaporfly. This midsole material is gonna be a lot lighter, a lot livier, more bouncy, and you get that extra pop off the toe. So if I was choosing one of these two for a race that was maybe on some dirt roads and I needed some extra grip, I would definitely choose the Vaporfly Next% Percent because it has that super light, bouncy, fast feeling foam. And with that more aggressive outsole on this particular version, it is just a no brainer. However, I'd probably use the Ultra Carbon just for training runs. All right, the next shoe I'm gonna compare it to is the Speed Goat 4 from Hoka. Now this might be kind of a weird comparison, but these are both shoes that I would take on trails. However, with the Speed Goat 4, I feel super comfortable barreling down some more technical single track, thanks to that super aggressive outsole and all that cushioning and stable platform on here. However, with the Ultra Carbon, I would be kind of more hesitant and kind of pick my lines and tiptoe around some rocks as opposed to just kind of having the tank of the Speed Goat 4. Both the midsoles of the shoes use EVA, but I found that the Speed Goat 4 was a lot more cushioned feeling and more soft. If I had to choose between these two shoes to do trail running, I would definitely choose the Speed Goat 4, especially if I'm doing technical trails where there's lots of rocks because this does have that toe guard and a more protective upper, while this has a super thin and flimsy upper that if you hit your toe on a rock, you're gonna get bruising, you could break your toe, and it's definitely more suited for some groomed trails or primarily like gravel trails. So to me, the CTM Ultra Carbon is kind of like a gravel bike. 
It has a lot of road DNA with a more versatile outsole that can take you off-road. With its super light minimal upper, the thick carbon plated midsole, it has what you find in a lot of carbon plated racers nowadays, but that heavy and aggressive outsole makes it better for off-road, but it kind of hinders the shoe in being a road racer. So it's kind of a niche shoe in my opinion, where it may not be the best road racer, but it may not also be the best choice for trails. So I'm really going to have to test this shoe out in a bunch of different terrains, and I'll report back to you on kind of where the shoe fits. So that's it for my first impressions of this shoe. Have you tried it out? Let me know in the comments down below how you use this shoe. Thanks for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos, and as always, keep on running.